Well, we've come to our first example of setting up and evaluating a triple integral. And so I want to begin by sketching a rough picture of the solid that we're going to be integrating over. My solid is bounded by two surfaces, both of which are a function of x and y. And so this one is going to be a type 1 triple integral, as we'll see. But let's go ahead and sketch the picture as well. I want to see it both from the picture and from the equations. And so I'm going to begin by sketching this guy. Uh, well, this one is just a paraboloid that's been shifted up six and then is opening down. So we can count up one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's make this one uh, a certain color so we can keep track. How about we make it red and then we'll sketch it in red as well. That way you can see uh, what's what. So this one is going to be opening down looking, let's go on down a little bit because we don't want to confuse. It's going to look something like that. All right, and then this one let's make um, blue and we'll have it, um, it's going to be opening up because it's positive, positive, and then it shifted up too. Also, by the way, it's elliptical. This isn't quite a circular paraboloid, but that that's okay. I'm not going to try to draw that precise. I'm just going to go up to and then I know that it's a paraboloid opening up, and it's going to look something like that. Whoops, that wasn't very nice, but we'll kind of adjust it here. Okay, so the solid that we want is bounded between these two surfaces, and you can kind of see that it has the green belt there is going to be the widest point on it. Maybe we'll go ahead and shade it so you can see it's this uh, blue solid region. And when I'm thinking about cutting it, uh, it should be very clear to you that type 1, cutting it vertically is the way to go. I'll use yellow for my cut. If I cut from the, in the z direction, then I'm going from this surface up to the red surface, from the blue surface to the red surface. So uh, def definitely going to be a type 1. And I want to realize uh, if we name this solid, if we name this solid S, that the volume that we want is the triple integral over S of 1 dv. That's maybe seems like a, a not very important thing to write down, but it's really good to know the basic formulas, right? I've got to know that volume with triple integrals, you just integrate one. And the idea there is, again, triple integrals give you hypervolume, but hypervolume is the same as volume when the function is always one. Okay, so I want to do this as a type 1, so I'm going to be projecting this solid down into the xy plane. You can already get a real sense from the picture that it's going to look like a circular region. I, I can see what it looks like. It's going to look like that. The question is, how do, how do I get a formula for that um, region? Well, let's see if we can do it. Uh, the widest point of this guy is happening where the two curves intersect, right? You can see that uh, the curve, the the red paraboloid and the blue paraboloid intersect and that point of intersection is the widest band around my solid. So I'm just going to intersect those two curves. I'm going to get x squared plus 3y squared plus 2 equals 6 minus x squared minus y squared. Move everything over we get what a 2x squared plus a 4y squared equals 4. So let's just divide by 4, and we're going to have x squared over 2 plus y squared equals 1. So that's the intersection curve, and that actually gives me the equation for the projection into the xy plane as well. So that, this equation is going to be very important to us. It's going to define an ellipse. This ellipse is stretched along the uh, x-axis. I'm not going to draw it too precisely, but it's stretched along the x-axis. And when y is 0, you can see that x is plus or minus root 2. So um, we'll go ahead and set those there. Of course, when x is 0, y is going from minus 1 to 1. So that's the region that we're integrating over. Please realize this ellipse is actually what I drew roughly in green. I'll actually go and erase that. Now, we could just see that it's going to be some kind of circular-ish region. Actually, it's an ellipse because the blue one is an ellipse, and that's our region. So, at this point, you are ready to set up the triple integral. 
And what we said was you cut vertically first, and then you get to choose how you want to cut over this region over here. So our volume V, let's actually pick it up from our first triple integral. The triple integral over S of 1 dV is going to become, we'll do the outside integral first. So I'm just cutting uh, with respect to Z. So I'm going to do a 1 dZ. Z is going from the blue paraboloid, the one that's opening up this one, to the red paraboloid. And so Z is going from x squared plus 3y squared plus 2 up to 6 minus x squared minus y squared. Those are the bounds on the first inside integral. Now, the other two, you get to choose. You can cut it however you want. You can cut it uh, either dx, dy, or dy, dx. I'll cut this as a type 1. Okay, and yes, I did say type 1 double integral. The other two bounds you set up just like you would if this was a double integral. It's the same thing. So double integral, I'm going to cut it dy and then dx. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down my choice. I chose to do dy dx. Now let's be careful. y is going from the bottom part of this curve up to the top part. And if you solve this equation for y, you're going to get y is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus x squared over 2. The positive square root is the top half. The negative square root is the bottom half. So my y cut, I'm going to cut it vertically. I'm going from the negative square root up to the positive square root. So I'll write those down. Negative square root of 1 minus x squared over 2 up to the positive square root of 1 minus x squared over 2. And now at last, I just want to do the bounds on x. x just goes from minus root 2 over to root 2. And at this, at this point, you set up the integral correctly. And I would argue that's at least half the work, if not more. Now we have to evaluate it. There, as we'll learn soon, there's going to be some other techniques that will allow us to evaluate this integral a little bit easier. But uh, let's go ahead and do it directly. So I'm integrating 1 with respect to z. And so I just get z. So the first step, I'm going to write everything out a little bit painfully here just to try and make things very clear for you. My first integral, I'm, I'm going to keep the other two. So uh, whoops, not minus 1. 1 minus x squared over 2 to radical 1 minus x squared over 2. The bottom one's negative. I integrate 1 and I get a z. I'm going to evaluate z. I like to write from z equals x squared plus 3y squared plus 2 to 6 minus x squared minus y squared. And then I'm going to have a, my dy dx floating along. That's step 1. I'm going to run out of room here. I'll have to add another page. Let's, let's do that right now so that we can ignore that later. I think we can say add page, and yeah, we're golden. Okay, so now I'm going to plug in my bounds and subtract everything out. And so I'm going to get, let's copy these so we can be a little faster. I'm going to get uh, this, and then I'm going to say, well, the top, 6 minus x squared minus y squared. Subtract, plug in the bottom, x squared plus 3y squared plus 2 dy dx. And I, I want to pause right here and point out to you that if you were trying to compute this volume using a double integral, this double integral is exactly what you would have written down because we're saying the top curve minus the bottom curve, which is what we talked about in our last video series. Anyway, we're not doing a double integral, we're doing a triple, but we happen to reduce the triple down to a double. And whoops, uh, I'm not sure what that's still doing there. Uh, let's just delete it. It somehow tagged along for the ride. Uh, hmm, weird. That's going to be from our next problem. I'm not sure why it showed up there. All right. Oh, whoa. This is going to be a problem. Wow. Well, uh, notability, you're, you're killing me here. But let's keep going, and maybe it'll go away. Maybe not. 
we're going to combine these guys as negative root 2 to root 2, uh, square root of minus 1 minus x squared over 2, positive 1 minus x squared over 2. And I'm going to get, what, 6 minus 2 is 4. I'm going to get um, minus 2x squared and then a minus 4y squared dy dx. I have no idea why that picture is showing up there. We'll just drop down below it and act like it's not supposed to be there. Okay, so now I'm going to integrate with respect to y, and I'm going to get the integral from negative root 2 to root 2. I'm integrating with respect to y, so 4y minus 2x squared y minus 4y cubed over 3. And then I want to evaluate this from y equals negative square root of 1 minus x squared over 2 to y equals positive square root of 1 minus x squared over 2. And of course, I need my little dx tagging along on the end. Uh, I'm going to save us some time. Uh, I can plug these things in and simplify, but it'll take me a little while. When you do this and when you clean everything up, you're going to end up with negative root 2 to root 2. I factored and got 2 minus x squared radical 4 minus 2x squared dx. I would encourage you to pause the video and work that out. Um, whether you do or don't, this is where we should get. And now at this point, we think, holy moly, this is taking forever. That's okay. Um, what we're going to do is um, go ahead and do a trig sub at this point. Yes, you heard me correctly. So your favorite integration technique. I've got a radical and a squared inside. I can't uh, try and somehow get out of this using algebra, algebraic techniques. There's a constant minus a squared term that tells me I want to use a sign substitution. So I'll tell you the substitution. You're going to do x is root 2 sine theta. And then, of course, dx is going to be root 2 cosine theta d theta. And uh, when you make the substitution, you're going to get uh, the, let's see, 16 over root 2 thirds integral from minus pi halves to pi halves, should you choose to switch the bounds, which I, I like to, cosine to the fourth theta d theta. And when you work this out, you're going to get 2 root 2 pi. Now, I could just imagine the look on some of your faces. Some of you are uh, paranoid at the thought of having to do all of this. Well, uh, good news and bad news. Bad news first. Yes, you do have to do all of this sometimes. That happens. That's part of it. Uh, Got to do it. Good news. We're going to learn some techniques that will mean that this particular problem we would not have had to work out this way. We'll be able to switch to a different coordinate system, which will make this significantly easier for us. So, um, for now, I wanted to illustrate two main things in this example. The first was, how do you set it up? If you can just set it up, I would be very happy with that. That's the main battle that we want to be able to win in this video. But then secondly, I want to make sure that we're comfortable, at least with the process of how you step-by-step step break down a triple integral. So even if you really don't like the last um, this last trig sub here. If you can just get here, that would be really great. So I'm going to stop. I was going to try to do two examples in one, but this took a while, so I'll stop and do another one. This is going to be a long video series. This is probably the longest section that I cover uh, in this class, but let's we're going to get through it.